My name is Brian Howard. I'm standing outside the Tower Hill School here in Randolph, currently used by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts as a municipal police training facility. Today, the town of Randolph is conducting a very important public health and public safety training exercise. Uh, it is very important to note that this is a drill. This is uh, not a real life emergency. The situations that are described here today are for educational purposes only. Uh, this program is an opportunity to show the community a behind the scenes look at emergency preparedness here in Randolph. Let's take a look inside. Would have called us once they had laboratory confirmation or even if they had laboratories that looked like this program. Joining me now, I have uh, James Mannion, the Regional 2 Manager for uh, MEMA. Uh, first off, welcome to the town of Randolph. It's excellent to have you here today. Great, thanks very much. Good to be here. Uh, we're running this event today to try and uh, educate the folks at home uh, about emergency uh, management, about how uh, the town uh, tries to uh, prepare uh, for any situation that may occur. Explain to the folks at home the role of uh, MEMA within state government and how it reaches out to the local communities. I think the most important thing we do is during large scale events, we reach out to other state agencies that have resources that might, might help out a community. So usually we stand up our regional operations center, which is down in Bridgewater, and headquarters will set up their operations center in Framingham. And usually at the, the regional office, we take the requests from communities, you know, whether there's a large snowstorm and they need plows, or whether there's a large power outage in town and they need a generator for their police station or a fire station if the power goes out, or maybe there's a, uh, a pumping station to you know, pump the sewage out, or a water station uh, to pump sewer, uh, sorry, to uh, pump water to homes. Uh, we talk to other state agencies and see what resources they have to support communities in their times of greatest need. Now, uh, uh, today's event uh, was sponsored by uh, a MEMA grant. Um, you had talked about in your comments where uh, some communities, Randolph has, has done a good job as far as having a lot of the technology. A lot of communities use the money to upgrade the technology. And you were impressed that Randolph uses theirs to run an event like today. Why is it so important that communities run events like today? The first few years that we had the grant, I think we've been doing it for about five years now, a lot of communities were buying equipment, but there's really only so much equipment that, uh, that you can use for emergency responses, and it's, it's great to see a community use this to really equip the people in town to better respond to some type of major event, and doing trainings like this um, really mentally prepares all the people, you know, all the municipal employees who are you know, going to be asked to help out with uh, large-scale disasters to you know, help the people in their community. I know when I, when I was a kid growing up, uh, say you lost power, there was a, a, a major event, you'd be listening to your transistor radio, mm -hmm. trying to get some information. How, how has the world changed and, and, and how has uh, emergency uh, services adapted to how families and technology works? It's, it's changed a lot. There are a lot more ways that we can communicate with the public now. Uh, we can still do it over the radio. We still have the... Um, emergency alert system that we can activate. Uh, but now there are apps that people, people can download onto their, onto their cell phones to get information from us. We uh, recently uh, uh, made a deal with uh, Ping4 is the name of the company, and it's a free app that any, anybody can download, and that's the, really the quickest way for anybody in a community, any regular citizen, to uh, get information from us. And we can use that where we can literally zero in on a building and send a message to, that pe to people in that building, and if they have a cell phone, then just that area will get it. So there's also uh, I mean, all kinds of uh, other types of, um, uh, we can also use the wireless emergency alert system to notify large swaths of people, uh, not as, as fine, as, uh, as kind of focused as the Ping 4 app, but as cell phones adapt and as uh, new cell phones come out, they're all going to be equipped with a wireless emergency alert portion uh, where if we send any, any information out, anybody within the area uh, will get a, uh, uh, an emergency message on their phone, and that's really uh, just through cell phone towers they hit people in certain places. Uh, there's also a lot of reverse 911 is, is sort of what we call it uh, for people who have home phones. Um, we can send messages out to, and actually a lot of communities have purchased this for themselves, but we can sort of do it on a on a on a wider basis where if we wanted to put a, push push a message out 
uh, via home phones, we could do that really to any town and you know any in any community we really needed to. And usually we, we always ask the community uh, leaders first about that. We don't just all of a sudden push a message out. Uh, we usually say, hey, there's something going on. Is it okay if we do this? Um, in some cases, you know, maybe if there was an earthquake, you know, we would push a, push a message out just to let people know that it happened and who to call to report any damage that uh, to report whatever type of damage that they might have. Um, so there's a lot. Yeah, there's a lot of ways to push push messages out now. And it uh, kind of makes our job our job a lot easier. And today's event uh, is a drill uh, for a meningitis uh, situation. Um, when people think of emergencies in, in New England, the snowstorms, it's usually weather-related events, mm -hmm. um, but it can really push the gamut. Uh, what what is the best way for people to be prepared? Uh, for an emergency, considering s such the wide variance of, of what an emergency can be. Mm -hmm. Actually, FEMA has some really great programs. Uh, if you go to FEMA.gov, I think it, uh, it's under preparedness there, uh, and it has a, a list of things that people should probably have on hand, or if somebody is asked to evacuate from their home, the kind of things that they should think about bringing with them. Uh, also on our website uh, at uh, mass.gov backslash MEMA, there's also information there that you know, links you directly to FEMA uh, to list out the, you know, the kind of stuff that people should think about ahead of time. And it's really good maybe just once a year to you know, get the family together and talk about you know, if something big happened and you didn't have your cell phone to use, where you would meet. It's good to set up a place, whether it's uh, you know, a family member, you know, maybe some distance away, maybe you know, 20, 30 miles away, um, or just, just somebody at a distance that everybody should call to let them know that they're okay because uh, you know people rely on their cell phones a lot now and if there was ever you know any major power outage that lasted a long time or maybe a you know sudden earthquake where cell phone towers went down it would really restrict people's use of cell phones and uh, would really restrict communication so it's just good to have uh, some plans in place ahead of time and make sure everybody in the family understands exactly uh, exactly what to do Joining me now is uh, Brian Gallant, the Emergency Management Director for the uh, Town of Sandwich. Also holds a, a lot of other roles and one of those luckily for the Town of Randolph. Uh, you've been a great friend to uh, Randolph working on emergency uh, planning, uh, working with uh, Cheryl Cates, with John McVeigh. Um, tell us a bit about today's exercise. Uh, what is it that, uh, what are we, we trying to accomplish when we run an, uh, an event like today? Well, whether it's a, whether it's a public health emergency or, um, you know, a a snowstorm uh, event, the whole community is involved and is affected. So this, what we did today, uh, what we've done over the past two years actually is uh, we've, we've decided to put together a committee uh, comprised of many of the town department heads and vulnerable population groups and things like that, private organizations, uh, to better prepare Randolph in the event of any emergency, whether it be public health or, or otherwise. So today's event is really a culmination of the two-year process. Uh, a year ago we had a, a tabletop exercise involving meningitis and this is a continuation of that event. And you know, we thought rather than do a smallpox or a flu event like everybody, every other community, uh, this really taxes uh, the community to, to the next level. And it really does. I mean, this, this is an actual event that, that occurred um, just about three weeks ago in the, in the town. And as a result of that, we tweaked the, you know, the exercise, uh, you know, a little bit. But good working group here. Um, it, it's been fantastic working here. And, and I think the town is much better prepared than it was, you know, even two years ago. What, what is the different groups uh, that are broken out here today? What are the types of discussions that happen at these tables? We're using the incident command system, and as a result, we have different tables. So we have a unified command table, which is right behind us. They're the decision makers, uh, they, and it's unified because we have somebody from town administration. We have somebody from the health. We have somebody from police, somebody from fire. The key decision makers are all sitting at this table, and everybody has a voice in the, in the process. They have a series of questions that they're answering. We have an operations group. They're really the, the, the get-it-done folks. They're dispensing medication and doing this ep epidemiology and, and, and surveillance investigations. The planning group is really just that, planning. <clears throat> What's the next operational period going to look like? Um, who, what, do, what do we have to do? do? Who do we have to contact? Things like that. Logistics, what do we need? The get stuff people. Uh, do we need medication? 
Do we need food to feed you know, people? We have a finance table. Somebody's got to pay for the, the staff, the school, the janitors for the school, the medication, you know, overtime for people if that's involved and things like that. Rich Mannion from, uh, from uh, MEMA mentioned uh, a lot of communities get these grants. They sometimes continue to buy more technology, hardware. Randolph has chosen to go to the next step, which he was very pleased to see, where you're running this type of a drill. Why is that so important? It's great to get the stuff, but you've got to use the stuff. Right. And you know what, they've, what we've decided to do here in Randolph is use, you know, you got stuff before, computers and things like that, but we're, we're taking that money and we're actually using it to exercise the, the staff and, and the tools. You know that, that were given to us the computers and things like that the iPads and you know people are using those kind of things today so it's, it better prepares the community because these even though they're simulated exercises it helps you when the real thing happens and that's that's really the gist of today with fire service we have, there's um, rehab that Joining me now, I have John McVeigh, the Director of Public Health here in the town of Randolph. Uh, John, welcome. Oh, thank you, Brian. Um, can you let the folks at home know, uh, who are watching, uh, what is today's event all about? What, what, is, what, is the, what is the goal of today's event as far as being prepared? Well, as you know, uh, Incident Command is very important. It's, a, it's a, an entity that needs to be done uh, local level, state level for emergencies. Uh, today we have meningitis testing that incident command system and the unified command. Um, we'd like to see if all the players in the town can actually uh, work with each other seamlessly in an event of emergency and how public health works with police and fire, uh, town manager's office, um, state level, other players. That's what the main goal is. What are some of the state agencies that are here today? Uh, obviously, we have the Office of the Medical Examiner, we've got Department of Public Health, uh, Massachusetts Emergency Management Agency, MEMA, uh, I think we have MRC, which is not a state agency, but they're helping as well. Those are the main state agencies that we have here today. How does today's event, in your eyes, how do you deem it as a success? What is the next step? How do we continue to move uh, forward in this uh, area? Well, this is a test of the ICS system, and at the end of the the exercise will have a hot wash and we'll go over uh, issues that were done during the exercise and determine if we actually uh, made progress and people agreed and uh, cooperation was done or made. I mean, it's it basically a testing of the ICS system through a realistic type of exercise such as meningitis. And if people want to know more about emergency management, uh, more about public health, uh, what is the best way for people to stay involved, get information, stay notified? Well, I mean, our website has information on emergency management, the town's website. This, the state website obviously has it as well at DPH, Department of Public Health. Uh, FEMA, FEMA is a really good source if you want to know about emergency management and incident command system. They have a huge um, uh, or a large amount of information on that, and you can actually get certified in different areas as a citizen in different incident command uh, roles. Mouth-to-mouth, -mouth, intubation, things like that. So that, you know, that not only is that hospital personnel, that they need... You know. Joining me now, the police chief here in the town of Randolph, William Pace. Uh, good morning, chief. Good morning, Brian. How are you today? I'm doing excellent. Uh, today's event, uh, a, 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 a very important drill uh, here in the town of Randolph to get everybody on the same page should there ever be an emergency. Tell us a bit about today's event and why it's so important. Well, planning is an important part of police work anyway, and we do that... Uh, constantly on a constant basis. But I think today's ex exercise is good because we puts all these people in the room. Um, in a mass, mass incident uh, that could occur, um, we have access today to everybody that we would need to have contact with during an emergency. This really is an impressive uh, group. You have folks from state agencies, uh, local uh, agencies, local community groups uh, coming together to, to all better educate each other. That's correct, and you know, this is a, a medical scenario today, but it could be any other type of scenario also, and we would call on the expertise of these same people. Moving forward, uh, what do you think is the next steps for uh, emergency uh, planning uh, in the town? Well, certainly more exercises like this. This is, uh, I believe, a grant through the Department of Public Health, um, and, and you know, better coordination of services. I, mean, I think that's very important. Um, and for Randolph residents who are watching here today, what? What can we hope that they take from today's event? 
Well, I hope they take the, the their police, fire department, um, the town government is working for them. Um, we, we do have contingency planning in case of a, an actual emergency and that they, they'll be well, well cared for. Joining me here now is our uh, public health nurse in the town of Randolph, uh, Cheryl Cates. Cheryl, good morning. How are you? Good morning, Brian. How are you doing? I'm I, glad I, to see you today. I am happy to be here. I've, I've always been greatly impressed with the work that you do uh, and the Board of Health in putting together these types of exercises. This is the second, but I know so much went into planning this. First off, can you let the folks at home know what today's event is all about? So the event today is about planning for emergencies, but in particular for vulnerable populations, so people who would need something more than the general population. And if we needed to open an emergency dispensing um, area that people would get medicine, um, we would have plans in place so that we could make sure that everybody in the community is um, notified and also can um, get the medicine they need in the emergency. And when you mention vulnerable populations, what, what group are we speaking about here today? So vulnerable populations are, are it's kind of a catch word, yes. but um, we think about the elderly, uh, we think about people with disabilities, we think about children and babies, we think about pregnant women, we think about people who speak a different language than English, and anybody else who kind of falls into an um, into the bucket of not really fitting where they can just figure it out themselves and and be safe. And so you might think of people who are homeless or people who are um, in transition. They just move to the community. So they may be somebody who needs to be looked at. Now, an event like uh, uh, being discussed here today, a meningitis outbreak, we're trying to make sure the folks at home know this is a drill. Uh, so when they hear about how many people are at Milton Hospital, how many people are at. This is a drill, this is an exercise, this is an opportunity to try things out, but it's educational in nature. Right, today's um, exercise is really about learning what we already do well, but also um, learning from the people in the room, the experts who work with the population every day, what are the things that we need to improve. And some of the things that we've already learned so far is that we need um, some enhanced communication um, between the different entities from public health and the hospitals and the vulnerable population agencies and that's why we're doing today so that we can actually build those relationships because what it's really about it's not really what we're exercising so it's not about the meningitis event which is um, a drill, it's an exercise, it's not the real thing. Um, it's really about who are you going to call when you need help and how are you going to do it in a way that keeps it organized and as um, not as chaotic as it could be if you really didn't have a plan. Why have we, and we were speaking to uh, uh, Rich Mannion from, from MEMA, you're starting to see a lot more public health emergency management groups working together. He said he wishes more were doing it like Randolph. Uh, wh why is that so important to you? I think for me it's so important because at the end of the day people are working in the community and there's emergencies that happen every single day and so if we can do uh, proactive planning we can prevent things that um, would just make the disaster greater and so if I can really work with people so they understand their roles ahead of time, then the things that you can't control in the emergency, um, then it just, it, it alleviates some of the things that you can manage ahead of time. So it's really important to think ahead and to really, um, to, to be that proactive entity. And I have, you know, experience from both sides of it and it's much better. It's always chaotic in an emergency. That's a given. But it's less chaotic when you have a plan that you probably don't even look at during a real emergency, but you already know the, the if you've practiced it, you know the players, you know who the people are that you, you want to have by your side um, making things get back to normal. For people at home who may want to get involved, there's an opportunity through uh, the Medical Reserve Corps 
uh, how would people get involved? And tell them a little bit more about the Medical Reserve Corps. I think um, for me, um, the Medical Reserve Corps has, is near and dear to my heart because I actually was part of the first Medical Reserve Corps in Massachusetts in 2003 on the Cape. And what I have found over the years being involved with Medical Reserve Corps, it's the, the greatest opportunity because you get to decide if you're going to respond. But the whole point of the Medical Reserve Corps is signing up ahead of time so that if you do choose to respond, that you are already affiliated and credentialed and so you're a known entity and you can do something really great to give back to the community. And so it's a really um, good opportunity for people to, to be involved. Um, meetings happen uh, for training and provide, sometimes they provide continuing education for um, credentialed volunteers and it's it's just the opportunity for when there the incident is so big that it exceeds what the the operations of the community can manage and so it's really about helping out it's not a first response it's really a secondary response for when um, the existing systems become overwhelmed and if somebody wants to get involved locally how would they do so? If somebody wants to get involved locally, they can um, con contact my office at the Board of Health and they can um, give me their contact information and I would refer them to Rick Roos, who's the coordinator for the SHARE um, Medical Reserve Corps. And that covers um, the four towns of Stoughton, um, Holbrook, Avon, and Randolph, and soon to be, I believe, Abington. And so it's, it's a great group. Um, it doesn't hurt at all because you get to decide whether you volunteer. And your number to reach you at? And my number is, it's 781-767-1406. Um, and you can also find me on the town website under the Board of Health. Joining me now, I have Louise Carcioni, the Director of Emergency Planning for the Department of Mental Health. Mental Health. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Thank you very much for joining us here today. Mm -hmm. My pleasure. What is the, the role of uh, the Department of uh, uh, Mental Health in a, in, a, in a situation like we're describing here today? Well, it's, it's twofold. One is to assure that um, there is uh, a component that includes planning for vulnerable populations, uh, people who are uh, mental health clients who are living in your community, uh, and there is representation of um, uh, staff from provider agencies here who are participating, and they, they're responsible to, for the care of, uh, of the people who live in, in the community. Uh, that's one part of it. The other part of it uh, has to do with um, providing uh, training uh, in, uh, for example, uh, one of the models is psychological first aid where we uh, train folks who are willing to respond in time of disaster to, um, to know how to deal with people who have been traumatized, uh, which is totally different from dealing with people who have a mental illness. It's just dealing with people who have been traumatized. And wh why is a training session or a drill like today just so important in that process? Well, because uh, you don't ever want to um, go to an operation uh, as, a, as a deployed, trained person and meet people for the very first time. For one thing, you want to know them before you uh, involved in a real operation. The other thing is it's critically important to know uh, whether or not the planning components that you have included in your outline are, uh, can be tested. This is one way of testing it is by doing it, it's like a dry run, so you're doing it with one another and then sometimes it occurs to you when you're uh, dealing with someone not from within your own agency but from another group, it occurs to you that you forgot this one little thing that's critically important and you find that out in the uh, drill or the tabletop. And in, in events like today, mm -hmm. um, what is probably the most important thing that you walk away from saying, geez, you know, th this really worked out very well? Mm -hmm. 
Well, uh, it's, it sort of gives credibility to um, the planners in any community, and of course in this case it's in the town of Randolph, um, that the uh, town of Randolph officials and the people who are involved in emergency planning and response are in fact um, capable of responding. It gives you that sense of security. Joining me now, I have Paul Mione. Paul serves uh, as a member of our town council, but he is also a member of our local medical reserve corps. Uh, so I'm hoping uh, that we'll be able to use this as an opportunity to highlight their fine effort. There are representatives here today. Tell us a bit about the MRC. Well, um, my husband and I joined the medical reserve corps, oh, several years ago. Maybe it's been um, about eight years. And um, it's a great organization. You don't need any backward tr back background training or uh, expertise. Anyone can do it. Um, they offer free trainings throughout the year. I got my CPR training through them. Uh, we got um, shelter training, which was really um, quite beneficial because I went through the shelter training. And then the year after that, which I believe was three years ago, we had the major flooding in, in Randolph. And uh, I was called up to um, to help run the, the uh, shelter at the senior center. So, you know, I had the fresh information and uh, was able to uh, practice what I had learned the year earlier. And that was really uh, an exciting thing for me because I, I knew nothing about that, you know, prior to that experience. As a, as a community leader and, and as a resident, to see local and state leaders come together here today to run this type of uh, exercise yeah. to benefit the town, um, what, what are your thoughts? Oh, I was just like um, so proud, you know, um, just of our community and of our staff, you know, Dave Murphy, Cheryl Cates, Brian Howard, I mean others, uh, Chief of Police, Chief of Fire, you know, um, to be able to um, coordinate this effort, uh, not just on behalf of Randolph, but certainly all these individuals who came here from other communities. I mean, they're going to go back to their communities and they're going to be talking about this. And so I think for Randolph to be... Um, at the forefront of an activity like this um, for other people to look at us as a role model. I mean, oh, who could ask for anything more than that? But it's, it's not like smallpox where we have to get it done. And... Joining me now, I have the fire chief here in the town of Randolph, uh, Richard Dunneman. How are you today, Rich? Doing great, Brian. How are you doing? Doing excellent. Uh, today's event, uh, a training session here, a very important one. Tell us a, uh, tell us a bit about it. Sure. This is a functional exercise dealing with a, uh, a fictitious outbreak of meningitis uh, in the town of Randolph. And we're going to reiterate that a few times during today's production uh, because as I hear some of the events and, and the names of, of locations in town, people at home want to make it very clear this is a training session. This is not real. Um, one of the things we're hearing a lot about today is incident command. Uh, break that down to, uh, to, the, to the folks at home that are watching. Sure, Brian. Uh, incident command is a, a management tool mostly used by the fire department. It's starting to grow. It's actually a mandated um, system by the federal government, um, which gets us actually grants and other monies. But um, it's most likely used by the fire department. It, it has to do with breaking it into different um, areas of a, of a plan where you have a planning uh, area, a um, logistics area, an operations area, a finance area, and you have the actual incident commander who oversees the whole operation. And it's just a management tool to actually make the, the system run smoother and more efficiently. You're at the table which is uh, incident command? I'm at the incident command table uh, along with the um, the uh, representative from the police department, Commissioner Sullivan, as well as the representative from the Board of Health, uh, John McVeigh. And we make, uh, we have the final say on any decisions made by the, the groups underneath us. Now the NIMS training, uh, the town has uh, over the last uh, number of years really uh, gotten very involved in uh, NIMS training. Uh, can you speak a bit about that? Sure, the NIMS training is like what I already uh, spoke about is the ICS. and. Within the town, we're all trained to a certain level so that we can all interact with each other during different events. And it, and it could be the event, um, you know, July 3rd, we use the NIMS uh, to actually organize the whole event. It doesn't have to be an emergency event. We can use it for, for anything that we, we, we deem it necessary for. And I know one of the keys uh, to that uh, in one of the sessions uh, I had attended is you forget that 
different organizations have different terms that have different meanings, and this is something where it's standard across the board. Right. Common terminology is, is definitely a huge part of the NIMS process, so that one, one facet isn't using terminology, as you spoke of, that the other doesn't understand. It has to be common, and that's part of the NIMS, the NIMS training. And what is the next step uh, in this process as the town continues to uh, advance um, training uh, for, uh, for any situation that may occur? I think next year we're going to actually blow this out into an actually operational um, function, functional exercise where we actually have people moving through an emergency dispensing site. Again, it's fictitious, um, and they'll be moving through, and we'll have to deal with situations that arise uh, during that time. Elizabeth, is there support in place for volunteers? And at this point, the medical resource... Joining me now, I have the town manager in the town of Randolph, David Murphy. Uh, David... Tell us about today's event, why it's so important. Well, uh, in government, we take it for granted, but the public entrusts us with their safety and welfare, and we take that uh, responsibility very seriously. So it's important that we, on a regular basis, exercise and communicate, not just as a town organization, but with the regional hospitals, the DPH, and many other state agencies, that in the event of a real emergency, we'd have to be working very closely with. So as a measure of our ability to test our uh, response capabilities, it's important that we annually go through an exercise so that we're all working together in following the Incident Command System program. How did this all uh, happen? Uh, what were the keys to, to making this uh, event uh, come together? We've received a lot of help, but I think it's important that um, our public health nurse, Cheryl Cates, gets the uh, direct credit for organizing all of this. The amount of agencies, hospitals, uh, town personnel, etc., that are here um, is very impressive. Uh, some of the folks from the regional planning agencies and from the state have pulled me aside and complimented the town for the turnout we have here today. Now, I think that's a testament to Cheryl and her planning committee uh, from both police and fire and public health here in Randolph that they've been able to do the outreach to get the people at the table from the regional hospitals, from the state agencies, uh, from the state planning agencies. Uh, you know, they all have very busy jobs and for them to set aside some time to really exercise with us here in Randolph is, I, I think, very important for our residents. How can we um, engage the residents uh, moving forward uh, into the next step is, is becoming more involved in this process? I think one of the areas where government can always improve is in its communication strategy. And one of the uh, crucial times for communication strategy is during a time of emergency or crisis. So one of the areas that's very well tested during an exercise like this is how are we communicating with the public. As a government agency uh, and as residents of this town, I would strongly encourage people to connect with their town government on a regular basis. Today it may be about a town council meeting or something that they may not be as interested in, but for an emergency situation, it's very important that there be immediate contact. Um, fortunately, we've never had to uh, have a situation like that, but in the event that we do, it should be very important for people uh, across the community to tune in and be aware of what's going on uh, with their local government. And what do you see as the next steps uh, in this process as we, as we move forward? Well, we'll do an after-action report. We'll figure out what we did well and what we need to do better. Uh, we'll address those areas, and next year we'll likely take it to the next level, where we went from a tabletop last year to an actual full functional exercise this year to maybe we're actually doing an event, uh, a practice event uh, next year too. So we want to keep testing our capabilities, continue to improve, and hope we never have to use it. I hope you enjoyed an inside look at emergency preparedness here in the town of Randolph. For further information about the Emergency uh, uh, Reserve Corps or to contact the town on any questions involving public health, call us at 781-961-0900 or visit the town's website, www.townofrandolph.com. Brian Howard from Randolph Community Television, thank you for tuning in. <laughs>